Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we are talking all about other ways to advertise. I know you know the simple stuff. I know you know the common things, but let's talk about a few different ideas for you to advertise. So if you have a business or a window cleaning business, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? I hope you uh, are having a swell, swell day. But if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy the content. There is 250 plus episodes, four and a half years of content for you to follow up. It's like 175 hours of WCR Nation. So go back, listen to Binge Away. And if you are one of the already cool kids, you've watched every episode or you're on it now. You've thumbs up the YouTube videos. You've followed me on TikTok. You've done all of that, and more importantly, you've bought your supplies through me. Shameless plug alert. Well, it is because of you that I get to exist in this world. So thank you very, very much for letting me put your uh, supply orders in. And I have to say, in this shameless plug, if you have not used me yet, for your orders. I want to put your order in. Just shoot me a text. It's simple. Shoot me a text at 862-312-2026. 862-312-2026. And just be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Throw it in your cart. Make sure you're logged in. Throw it in your cart. It saves. And instead of hitting go and doing all that checkout stuff, you just send me a text and say, Jersey, go. And I will put it in for you. It costs you nothing extra. Now you have a guy in the industry. It makes my day. It's a virtual high five of awesomeness. And that is what I live for. So please let me put your orders in. Um, And uh, second part of the shameless plug, if you haven't yet, think about this. You're already listening or watching a window cleaning podcast. You're already nerding out in the industry. You've already decided you're going above and beyond. So why not get the AWC magazine, American Window Cleaner Magazine? You should. You really, really should because American Window Cleaner Magazine is absolutely awesome. Uh, just go to awcmag.com and uh, get a subscription because I also own the magazine and I would love to see you get a subscription. I see all of them come through, by the way. Every name come through. Whew. Okay. Well, shameless plugs are all over. Uh, but yeah, all those things are very important either way. But today we are talking all about other ways to advertise. Now, I know we've talked about advertising, and it's kind of been sprinkled in there, but I kind of want to go over some concepts in just advertising in general. And you may be thinking, if you're one of those that watch this or listen to this right when it comes out, why are you talking about advertising? I'm busy right now. Well, the first lesson in advertising is you advertise when you're busy, not when you're slow. I know that sounds crazy, but most people they go, man, I'm slow right now. I got no business. I got to advertise. I got to put some kind of deal out. I got to get people buying. To push somebody into buying when it's not in their head is really, really, really hard next to impossible. And I always say this kind of same concept is that if you had a really good deal on a cheeseburger, you have the best cheeseburger in town. It is 50 cents for this cheeseburger. Huge sale. They're normally $10. It's only 50 cents now. It's absolutely the best, highest rated cheeseburger ever. And you're selling it to a vegan? Well, it doesn't matter your sale. It doesn't matter the timing. It doesn't matter what you're doing, right? It just doesn't. To step it up, it's like timing in general. You could, I love burgers. (laughs) you haven't, couldn't tell. But if you tried to sell me a cheeseburger at 7.30 in the morning, it could be a really good deal, but I don't eat in the morning. I don't eat at all in the morning. But now if you tried to sell me a cheeseburger, say at like five at night, well, it could trigger something in me because I'm already going to be hungry or already am hungry. And then I want to buy the cheeseburger. You get a higher ROI when you do that that way. So advertise when you're busy. I'm telling you, it doesn't make sense to you maybe right now, 
but strike while the iron's hot. That's literally a saying. And you take those people that you book, and you go, man, I'm, I'm already a month out. Well, cool, congrats. Now you start booking people and saying, hey, I'm a month out. Here's the appointment. Right? That's what you do. You're charging a premium when you're busy. You're advertising when you're busy to fill the times when you're not. You can push it through. I don't like when people are months and months and months out. I had somebody tell me uh, maybe like two weeks ago that they're already booked through Thanksgiving. And when I'm recording this, well, it was April when I was talking to a person. That's too much. If I call you and go, hey, I'd like to get a window cleaning this spring. And you're like, okay, cool. November 17th. I'm like, oh, I'll call someone else. And if you're fine with that, fine. But man, you're just going to be stumbling over having to find new customers all the time. Your customers stay with you now, but that's not how things work. It's time to hire, right? You want to get that window shorter. But you also want to get people while they're thinking about it, right? But there's a big difference between local and national advertising. A lot of people kind of think like, um, I see a lot of companies doing TikTok, which I'm on TikTok now, so I'm seeing that more. Uh, I see people that are doing um, uh, different types of ads, and uh, they're even putting things out there on a bigger schedule. They're, they're, they're catching SEO words. Um, they're doing all these things on a national level when we're a local company. In fact, I saw a company come across my Facebook. They were advertising. And they just chose the words window cleaning. So I is searching for something or it knows that I like that or whatever the algorithm is in Facebook and it pulled up. And this deal was $2.99, 20 windows, something, something, something. It was a great looking ad. I was like, oh, wow, I'll click them. I haven't heard of this company yet. They were in like uh, Anaheim, California. Why did you just waste your advertising dollars on me on the East Coast when you're on the West Coast? You know, tailoring things to local as a local company is going to be big. Same thing with TikToks. I see a lot of people, which it's cool. People like eyes. People like to be, you know, TikTok famous or, you know, um, it's nice to have people appreciate the stuff that you're doing. I get that part. But a lot of times in that is you'll see videos, somebody cleaning a window with 7 million views. And Something like that is cool to say, hey, I got this video with 7 million views, but like a hundred of them, not even, are anyone that you would ever advertise to. So people put content out and they try to be on the For You page or whatever in TikTok. They're trying to get something in there more views, but they're not realizing that there's still a target market, right? If there's somebody, anybody watching your video within farther than an hour from where you are, it's cool that they watch it. That's not advertising. Don't say, you know, oh, I got uh, 20,000 followers on TikTok or whatever. No, that's cool if you're a media company. But if you're a window cleaning company, it doesn't matter if somebody in Idaho likes your Florida company, right? You got to find out where your people are. Where's your people, right? In order to find out where your people are, Do a search. Now, I'm not saying click on people's ads because that's obviously you're causing them money, right? I'm actually in the um, uh, market for a house washer right now. Um, So that's why if I see anything pop up, I'm, I'm looking. But if you just search in your area, go in incognito mode or view, and that basically says that you've never done a search before. It's like a fresh screen. Right? If you just search on your own, you'll probably pop up. You'll be like, well, I do really well. Well, it's because you've been to your website a bunch of times and it thinks you like you. But go to incognito view and just search a term or terms that you want to be found under and see who pops up. It's not the companies themselves. It's where they're finding it. So if it's you know XYZ window cleaning, I skip to the next one, look at the next one. Sometimes you'll see Home Advisor. You'll see Thumbtack. You'll see uh, Angie now, I think it's called, which Angie's List, sometimes Better Business Bureau, whatever is, is ranking, that's where people are being found because it is ranking. They pay very good money to be there. Those are the places that you 
want to be found. A lot of times when you start finding things, you'll find Facebook groups, you'll find uh, places you may not even go. Go page one, two, three, four on Google. I know you don't want to be on page four of Google, but it gives you an idea of what other things are out there. Where are your people being found? It's a really, really specific niche. Somebody has to be looking for you and you're a local company, right? Obviously, you don't always know who's your target market as far as um, a person walking down the street if they like window cleaning or want window cleaning. You have to be in front of them to see. But if they own a home, awesome, right? You could do a bunch of services for somebody who owns a home. Sometimes people want to do their own services. I get that. But you need to find out where those people are actually looking. Where are they? What are they doing? Right? We talked about avatars before. Avatar is basically your perfect or most common customer, right? It is um, a woman between uh, 42 and uh, 68, right? Those are, those are my kind of demographic uh, ages, right? You know kind of how many dogs they have, what they do, you know what their income level is, what their house looks like, square footage. You know a lot of stuff about that that typical customer that you have, even if you've not laid out your avatar, which I really do suggest that you do. Because again, if I know I'm talking to you, I'm going to talk to you so that I can connect with you, right? Not everybody. If I know that there's thousands of people that are listening to this every week, I am not going to advertise or, or try to talk to all 5,000 people this week, all at one time. I can, and I do, but I'm not going to get a better ROI than if I just picked you. Maybe you like fishing, you know? Maybe you like golf. Maybe you don't do anything but work, right? Then I know I'm talking directly to you. I know how to talk to you. I know that I could talk a certain way to make you understand, right? I also know in mirroring, just in communication in general, if I'm talking to you and you're from New Jersey, you're going to talk a little bit faster. Maybe you're from New York, right? I'm going to put it out there and talk a little bit faster because that's how you talk. That's how you hear. But if you're from Tennessee, Alabama, some of these places, you slow it down. You have to talk a little bit slower Not because they're slow, but because that is the way that the communication is done. You feel a lot better when I talk like this than when I talk really fast. But if you're in New York, if you're in Long Island, if you're in any of those places, any type of uh, Upper East Coast, you're going to talk a little bit faster, right? Your communication is going to be a little bit more like this, right? So I need to know who I'm talking to in order to get the biggest bang for your buck. Same thing with advertising. Where are your people? What do they do? A really, really good way to find this is Facebook groups. Facebook groups, and I don't like spamming. Spamming just means advertising blankly without adding value. That's really hard. That that's really, really hard. I you can remind people, but just to advertise to no one is a commercial, right? So take this podcast. I've done four and a half years every single week of this podcast, and I have mentioned to you that I sell window cleaning supplies. That's what I do. Um, Doing this show helps me connect with a bunch more people. It helps me put more orders in. I don't make money on the podcast, right? I've never made uh, money specifically from you watching this. But I do, if you watch it, say, man, I got some value from that guy. Thank you. That's really awesome, man. I I really appreciate you. You've helped my business. Even if it's a little, I'm going to put my order in through you, right? So I'm giving you value in the hopes, I truly do hope that it, it benefits you. I love helping businesses in general. But I also hope that in turn, you put your supply orders in through me instead of ordering directly through the website, right? Or ordering with another rep or whatever, right? 
So don't spam these groups in the Facebook groups, but you'll see, say, there's, there's a, there's a, uh, my, com- my, my city I live in is called Mooresville. Mooresville is, uh, rhymes with moms, right? So, uh, moms and Mooresville is a group, right? Finding those type of groups, those are all mommy groups where they're all busy. They all have kids. They're all focused on their kids because they're in groups. That's a great niche. That's a great person for me because they're so busy with life. They don't have time to do the things that I do, right? If I clean their windows or wash their house or whatever it may be, it gives them more time to hang out with their kids, right? So that's a great group, right? Say I find out that my local city has a golfing group. Well, it takes time to golf. People like golfing on the weekends. Well, you can't go golfing if I or if you are cleaning your windows. But if I come in and clean your windows, you have a whole weekend. You don't have to worry about that. Honey-do list, done. I can give you free time to go golfing. You see where that's going is that as soon as I know the people and what they're into, I can then sell to them. So if I am in a group, right? So some, say somebody's like, man, I really want to do 18 holes this weekend, but uh, how do you guys, you know, what time do you start in order to, you know, do that four hours, you know, set aside four hours or something? You'll see these type of posts. That's when you jump in and be like, well, I uh, own XYZ window washing. And it's actually funny you say that because uh, we get a lot of people who hire us because it frees them up from their, you know, honeydew list to go golfing. I didn't advertise right there. I'm just kind of putting something out there. That allows people to see what we do. They allow us uh, um, to basically advertise without advertising because what it does is it triggers somebody to understand what you do and then they want to contact you not you pushing it on them right if i jump in your face right now and i'm like hey bye 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 well you're gonna be like okay whoa dude chill man but if i say something that triggers you oh man yeah it's cool it's there's new new systems out there, man. This pole, uh, waterfed pole, is absolutely incredible. Never seen anything like it. It's just, it's nuts. It's absolutely amazing. Well, now you're like, well, what is, what is this pole? I, why is it so amazing? What do I? Now it's your idea to ask me. It's your idea to buy something, right? You can advertise without advertising, right? Letting people know just that you're a tattoo artist or like, you know, showing people your portfolio of your tattoos. Dude, look at this one turned out so awesome. You didn't mention your company. You didn't mention nothing, anything about any of it. You didn't sell, you didn't talk price. You didn't do any of that, but you got people, if they're in the market for a tattoo to be like, Oh man, Hey, I got a question for you, man. I'm looking for something. Like, is this big, blah, 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 it's full color? Is that something you do? And like, what would the price? They're going to come to you. That's what Facebook groups are. Facebook groups and all that, you can advertise to who the group is at, who the group is after, without actually advertising. If you jump in groups, and I've seen this before, people jump in groups and they're like, XYZ window washing, phone number, blah, 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 servicing the Kingstown area. Not one person. You'll get like one or two likes just because somebody's like, oh, that's something. Or they're trying to do, you know, something in order to kind of, you know, make you feel appreciated. They're not going to care. If you talk the wrong way, it doesn't work. It's it's like if I started speaking Portuguese, Portu, what? Mandarin. We'll say Mandarin. I don't know the Portu, Portu. Anyway, I'm not smart and all that. Sam, start, start talking Mandarin. If you don't know Mandarin, I could be saying the greatest things ever, but if I'm not speaking your language, you're not going to listen to me, right? So understand who you're talking to, and Facebook groups is a great way to do that. Uh, another really good way to get your message out there, and again, Facebook is really, really good at knowing who they are. 
and who looks at them and who you are and what your preferences are and your, right? They know all that. So now if you're in a marketplace, so you do your services. Simple picture. Here's your service, what you offer. Sell the why. Your USP, why should somebody buy it? Don't, don't tell them price. They don't need to know that. Maybe give them a ballpark, but no need. What you're doing is you're creating interest in your company, right? So getting that out there, putting that out there, that's big. Marketplace is a great place for that. People sometimes overlook marketplace for services. They think that it's more people just selling things. But guess what? You're still selling. You're selling yourself, right? You're selling your service. It's like Craigslist. Craigslist is, there's no real algorithm to Craigslist. It is just a list. It's a list of stuff and items that can then be searched. So if somebody's searching a certain word, it could pull up your post. Craigslist is free a lot of times. So if Craigslist is free, post something there. Why not? What if you had one person every two months? It was free. That's free ROI. 100% ROI, right? Because it's free. Marketplace is free. Why not have something in rotation there? Change up the pictures a little bit, right? Go after maybe different services, you know? Maybe you're doing a market, uh, marketplace post every two days. Today you're doing window cleaning. Two days from now you're doing house washing. Two days from then you're doing gutter cleaning. Two days from then you're doing uh, roof cleaning. Two days from then you're doing window cleaning. Two days, you know, right? You're in a rotation. Keeping those things fresh is going to get people. Now remember, the biggest thing, if you could somehow be the McDonald's, where everybody knows your name, everybody knows your logo, everybody knows what you have, what you do, and the quality, it's a no-brainer. They're going to hire you. Now, we'll never be like McDonald's. McDonald's is on a whole nother level as far as like, you know, um, uh, nationality side and um, just connections and content and all that. But you know what I'm saying, right? So getting in front of people is huge and valuable. Even if some of these are targeted, you're going to have a better ROI. Now, the same thing goes with uh, direct mail, which uh, I'm not really necessarily going to get into, but say EDDM. EDDM versus direct mail, EDDM will always have a lower ROI or a lower, uh, not ROI necessarily, but you'll have a lower um, interest level because you're just blanketing everybody, right? In a targeted list, you go, okay, I got this huge list of people who used my services before and you send them something. Well, that ROI is going to be way higher because it's qualified better leads, right? That's what we're doing in digital. We're trying to find a better, a more targeted area or group of people that we can talk to. Just say, hey, this is what we do. Maybe they're not ready now, but maybe they start to understand who you are or what you are. ROI versus exposure. They're different things but both are really, really good. I'll tell you kind of an example. I really liked uh, advertising or sponsoring like little league teams and uh, sponsoring, you know, baseball fields or um, we had uh, kickball. I've done that. Um, scorecards. I still have a problem with scorecards, but um, that type of thing, just getting your name out there. Those exposure points are not going to have the ROI that targeted ads will. But exposure is really good, right? Exposure is really good. Like I said, if you could be everywhere, it would help people understand who you are, what you are, when they need you. That's where the exposure is. Exposure is not going to be ROI sometimes, right? So putting it out there on Craigslist, staying current with it, Putting it out there on Facebook Marketplace with logos, pictures of your text, not pictures of windows. Everybody knows what a window looks like, right? Something that allows someone to instantly recognize or understand more or less what you do. That's exposure. Exposure is getting it out there so that when it does come time to that, I mean, you've done this already. 
with services. Maybe it's a plumber or a heater or a, or a HVAC guy, heater, geez. Maybe it's any of that, right? And you're like, uh, oh man, we got to hire a plumber. Who should we hire? What's that, uh, you know, that guy with the lightning bolts in his trucks, they're all over town. Uh, lightning plumbing. Those guys, let's, let's call those guys. You didn't know anything about them. You didn't know, maybe you don't know anybody who's used them. Maybe you don't know anything, but you just were like, that's who popped in your head when you thought about it. To get to that point is a really slow road. That takes time. It's not going to happen tomorrow. But when somebody goes to think about window cleaning, they should think of you. And the only reason they'll do that is because they've seen you, you're embedded in them, right? New customers, they have to see you when they need you or remember you when they need you, right? It's all about that. It's trying to catch them at the moment of need. If I go to a grocery store and I need gum, well, it's in checkout, right? It's right there. So I can go, oh, that's right. Be there when you're ready. Be there when they're ready. Be there when it's in their head, right? That's advertising when it's busy. It's exposure. It's all of that. Here's another really great idea that I really, really, really loved. Anytime anybody, anybody, sent me a message, or if there was a big um, silent auction for some kind of event, I would always, always be like, hey, I would love to give you uh, two $200 gift certificates for window cleaning. Or I'd love to give you one $200 gift certificate for window cleaning. One $250 gift certificate for window cleaning, whatever it is. And you go, whoa, you just paid $250 for some ad space, basically. No, no, I didn't. What I did do, I advertised to a bunch of people who are passionate about a cause. Any of the cause could be anything. I've had it for private uh, monastery schools. I've done it for uh, fallen officers and and cancer um, survivors and all these other things. Because the people that are in that are interested in that thing. If they're there, if they're looking at it, if there's any exposure, they're interested in that. Now they see that you have the same passion as them. You're speaking to them on their language, right? Every time I've ever donated a gift certificate to somebody, say it's $200, $250, that's towards a whole home window cleaning. I'm always going to make another $50 to $100. Usually our guys always get tipped on gift certificates too. <clears throat> Not only did I help a cause, make some money, but I got a new customer out of it, potentially. I got somebody who is still going to pay me for my time. Because again, if you're doing a $200 gift certificate or 250 even, most jobs are above that. Well, if they're above that, then you're still going to make the money for your time. I'm not going to make profit on that, but I'm going to get a bunch of exposure. I've had times where I've done gift certificates and I've had three people call just from that event. Hey, I was bidding on that and I didn't win it. You know, it really went really high and blah, 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 blah. It was a great cause, but I wanted to get a book with you anyway. If gift certificates are there, you're touching those people. Those people are passionate about whatever that is that they're doing and you're getting a new customer out of it. Gift certificates are huge. It's about contacting people when they have a passion, right? Another really good one, and I'll leave you kind of on this, is plastic gift cards. I know, I've talked about it a bunch. But plastic gift cards is a way to advertise. The way to do a plastic gift card, by the way, plastic gift card looks just like a gift card, but it's just printed. You get them here at windowcleaner.com. And I make them look like a gift card, and I make them for 20 bucks, whatever you want, dollar amount, right? Not a ton, but just $20 gift card. And then every time I do a job, every single job, that's a residential job, every single job, I give them two cards, two plastic cards. I say, oh, and just so you know, I put some gift cards in here for the next time uh, service. I gave one for you and then one just give to a friend. Cool. Guess what? I just got somebody to advertise for me. I didn't ask for a referral, which I always do anyway, but not with that. Right? I didn't ask them to do anything above and beyond. I asked them to be a good friend and give somebody some free money. It works so well, right? Now, Jane Smith is advertising for me. She's handing out gift cards, which is a business card. 
which is basically her saying to her friend, all these guys are great. Right? Everybody's like, well, what if they just keep them for themselves? Cool. It's 20 bucks. I don't care. If you're worried about $20, you are charging too little. You're charging too little. Right? Plastic gift cards are huge. And the concept of advertising, you have to think above and beyond what you're normally thinking in advertising. And there's some really, really good ways to advertise out there. So, yeah. Put your orders in through me. Shameless plug starting all over again. But I really do. If you're watching still, please let me put your orders in. I'm truly small, big. It does not matter. I know it takes a, 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 an extra minute to, to shoot me a text, but I really genuinely appreciate it. And if you don't have time for that, get a subscription. Scub, scub, Get a subscription <laughs> to American Window Cleaner Magazine. Get it. American Window Cleaner Magazine is absolutely amazing. There's posters, there's stickers, there's everything, and it's in a paper magazine sent to your door, and you can sit on the toilet and read away. Go to awcmag.com and get it. There's also sticker sheets. Go buy some sticker sheets. Yeah. Anyway, I definitely appreciate it. Until next week, go out there and find ways to advertise. But more importantly, be epic.